And last, I'll be going up. And this is the other show that almost brought me to my quota in terms of, all right, I need to stop watching Girls in a Band <laughs> series. And it is called Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night, also known as Yoru no Kurage wa Oyugenai, also shortened as Yorukuta. So this is also an original anime television series. I believe this is the... I think this is the only episode that we've ever had in the history we're of all, the We're all... We're anime originals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's all anime originals. I don't think we've ever had that um, Probably in not. the history of this podcast. So that's uh, very interesting. It's and just I, kind of wild, too, because anime originals are becoming uh, increasingly... I thought you were going to say all CG. Comedy. Exactly. Yeah, all CG. Yeah, no, that would have been I, great. I yeah. Why didn't you pick a CG series? We, we are probably going to get that in like oh, more than likely, next five eventually. Years. Yeah, yeah, in the next five years. But yeah, this is definitely the first time in again in the history of this podcast where we've all all only covered anime originals in one podcast. But um, yeah, this is also an original anime television. Wait, hold on, Girls Band Cry is not original. Yeah, yes, it is. it is. The manga is a simul release, as Nier oh, said. Okay. It is part of its sort of multimedia Fair. package kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, uh, Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night, an original television series, which is actually announced slash produced by Dugo Koba, celebrating its 50th anniversary. Uh, wow. So, if you don't know what uh, Dugo Koba ser- studio is, they started out with you know series like Eleven Eyes, Yudu Yudi, Kohime Muso, Kujobu. Uh, okay. okay. kun Umaru-chan, Gabriel Dropa, New Game, Dumbbells, Yesterday Utate, uh, Utate, and you know, more recently they've done stuff like Oshinoko, uh, Shikimori-san, Senpai Gozai, Osamake, and I believe next season they are doing uh, Roshidere, or also known as Ah, yeah, sometimes hides their feelings in Russian. Uh, so that's coming next season. So they've been doing a lot of stuff. They've been they have like phases where they like branch in and out of like their comfort zone, but in general, their visual quality and consistency in their visual quality is second to almost none. I think, in my opinion. Um, so this is directed by Takeshita Ryohei. Takeshita Ryohei is most famous for directing uh, Edo Manga Sensei. I believe that was probably under JC staff. I want to say because that was Oreimo was under JC staff as well too, right? Um, uh, but... Edo Manga was A one. Oh, okay, okay. So A1, sorry. Um, and he was also indeed a long time sort of uh, Z-Beck slash Co- Cloverwork slash A1 Pictures veteran. He's done mostly slice of life stuff, so um, he's quite well uh, suited to this sort of genre. And he brings with them the uh, the writer, for, so the writer for this original series is Yakuyuki. Yakuyuki. Who is actually the original creator behind uh, Jack Kara Tomizaki kun, also known as bottom tier character Tomizaki? So he, so Takeshita, along with uh, Yaku, uh, Yakuyuki, uh, kind of leads a group of people uh, who is sort of this mishmash of people he previously worked with. For instance, uh, he, uh, he did, um, he worked with uh, Yokoyama uh, Masaru, who is heading the music, and, and he, Knows Yokoyama from Makenki, which is like a Zebek uh, series. <laughs> it's like it's if you guys don't know, Holy it's a very shit. like etchy lewd um, Zebek series. Original material was drawn by a very famous uh, um, Dojin slash H manga artist uh, Makenki, so he knew the music guy from there, as well as you know long-standing Dogakobo veterans Tanjikuchi Junichiro um, uh, heading the character design. Art direct, uh, sorry, Suzuki Aino, one of the animation directors, stuff like that. There, there's a lot of Dogokobo's uh, in-house veterans that are coming in, and outside industry veterans, uh, kind of a Yuji or um, what was it? I believe it was unit director. No, sorry, it was art director. Yeah, kind of a Yuji, as well as Kimura Eriku, who was the sound director. So they, it's this very mishmash group of people, but they, because of all their experience, they form a relatively solid powerhouse team. Um, I would say honestly, the weakest link, in a sense, is actually uh, Taki <laughs> is actually Takeshita, the Takeshita, the director, as well as Yaku uh, Yuki Yuki Yaku. So the rest of the audiovisual team is pretty solid here. The voice acting cast is also quite solid. I think it's pretty much all um, 
it's mostly female. Yeah, it's yeah, it's al almost yeah, it's pretty much all female characters, and pretty much all of them are voiced by recent, you know, up and comers or A listers or near S S listers. You know, Itomiku. I don't think I need to explain. Tomita Miyu. Um, Takashi Rie. I think the fourth, the least sort of famous out of the uh, four here is uh, Shimabukuro Miyuri, who voices one of the main characters. Um, I think she's an up and comer. The rest, again uh, Sato Asami, Anzai Chika, Okasaki Miho, Toyama Nao, Amaki Sari, um, Uesaka Sumire, um, Kaida Yuko. You know, all very prolific people here. Never heard of them. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Who's like a sweet? Who is she again? <laughs> and you know, uh, so very uh, solid group of staff as well as uh, voice actresses leading the cast here. Going over audio visuals real quickly, the OP OPED opening is uh, "Irodori" by Kano Irana, a standard uh, J, J pop J rock singer. Uh, 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 yeah, a uh, known uh, J pop J rock singer here uh, in Japan. Uh, I would say both the songs and the visuals were a bit of, uh, a lot of them were very sort of on the nose in like nostalgia evoking style. So for instance, the OP had very heavy use of like this, like weird bloom all throughout the opening. Um, and the composition was, uh, I, I want to say a J rock style that was very reminiscent of Anna song OPs of the tw 2010s and like 2000s late 2000s so it's very like evocative of that sort of period of time um at least the opening um and the ending theme itself is uh i believe the name is uh so one day is 25 hours by tsurushima anna and this is a little bit more of a standard song ed with a little bit more uh kick to it um in terms of the energy but I would say more or less the OPED is pretty standard, although, again, the OP visuals and sort of the general theming is very, uh, again, a little bit on the nose, I would say. Um, the art style for this series is a lot more subdued, like Dogokobo's more recent work and stuff like uh, Sing, yes uh, Sing Yesterday for Me, Yesterday Utate, than it is with their sort of standard life comedy comedic fare, like New Gamer Yudu Yudu, although obviously those are very different, like, Right, because yesterday came from a very you know standard kind of uh, manga talking about you know conflicts and stuff like that. Whereas um, New Game and Yuri Yuri are both, I believe, Yonkoma, right? And yeah. they're sort of supposed to be like you know bubbly girls popping around everywhere. So uh, this art style is a lot more again like yesterday. It's a lot like Oshinoko stuff like that. Um, standard non like just girls running around everywhere. Uh, for the most part, it's uh, the animation quality is I want to say solidly above average. Obviously, it doesn't have all of like the smooth animation that it might, you know, something like Girls Band Cry would have necessarily. But a lot of good animation where it needs to be. A lot of the st still frames are uh, perfectly good, and the character. But does it look as good as Bochy the Rock? <laughs> does, does it have some you know CG transition scenes of Boom just like flying out? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, given the quality of the animation in terms of the design, it, I think when the singing and stuff like that is happening, uh, probably Bochi the Rock is a little bit better. Um, but in terms of like the general models, the scene, the slice of life scenes, um, the stuff like the slap scene and the back and forth, I would say this one does edge out Bochi the Rock a little bit. In terms of animation quality, obviously there are like the meme moments and like Bochi the Rock and stuff like that. But what I'm considering is like consistent uh, animation quality, <laughs> not just the meme scenes. So I, I would say that's a, it's a little bit better on this end, to be honest. Um, most of the insert songs are pretty standard female vocal J Rock. I don't think you know it, a lot of this is more or less in the same sort of pool again as Bochi the Rock, as something like um, I wouldn't even say Kaon because Kaon is a little bit general kind of 
Like no one remembers Chaos, Chaos Spire. That's what three generations ago of anime. Yeah. <laughs> three prehistoric three, anime watchers. Three aeons ago. Yeah. It before Isekai, so bi. It doesn't count anymore. Yeah. Um. But yeah, because yeah. Chaos is a little bit more like j rock like anisong j rock that wants to harken back like kind of crawl back into like a bubble pop shell but yeah it had a I, bit more of a pop bent to it yeah 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 it's it it was like um it's like uh that sort of stuff is like more like um like a miley cyrus kind of thing than anything else but uh i would say this sort of general I wouldn't say indie rock, but like a uh, general sort of, you know, indie, J rock, kind of female vocal, basement kind of stuff going on. You know, talking about, you know, complex and stuff like that. It's a little bit more same along the lines, but I wouldn't say anything. Any of the songs in the soundtrack were that inspiring. So, yeah, uh, that was my uh, general review of audiovisuals. I would say visuals definitely above average for sure. Audio is pretty standard. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, be like, "I'll watch it because of like all the songs or whatever." So, finally, uh, I'm going to just go over the story real quick. Uh, my thoughts on it. Uh, I'll just read the mal premise really quickly, and then just kind of smooth over the story. So the premise, as it reads on my anime list, is four girls. Uh, Ma- Mahiro Kozuki, an illustrator who stops drawing. Yamano Uchi, yeah, Kano Yamano Uchi, a former idol who wants to prove herself with singing. Nox Yugasaki, the self-proclaimed strongest VTuber, and Kimura-chan, a mysterious composer who wants to support her favorite person. They all together form an anonymous artist group, Jelly. So, what happens is that uh, Kozuki Mahiro, she, you can kind of uh, consider her the main sort of Watson chronicler, second person uh, perspective, but sort of the quiet main girl still. Um, she is in high school. She was once a uh, a young illustrator who was, you know, getting awards and being um, being highlighted in like you know local news and stuff like that. Um, but she stopped drawing, and she gets she meets Yamano Chikano, who is uh who has created like an online YouTube singing channel for herself where she you know posts her covers and stuff like that. And they meet together. Um Kano was inspired by uh Mahiru's former drawings before she stopped drawing, right? And she wants them to work together and Obviously, at first, there's some reluctance, there's some uh, lack of confidence, there's some conflict, blah, blah, blah. But after they talk it out, they, you know, they start working together. And then from there on, the other episodes are them, you know, gathering the rest of the Scooby gang, right? Um, the VTuber behind the, or the face behind the VTuber, Yugasaki Nox, who is um, this sort of formerly Genki girl, uh, Kaose. Uh, well, sorry, Watasa Q, uh, QE, um, who is now sort of this like hikikomori kind of recluse girl who doesn't want to go out and face people, right? And this other person, uh, what is it? I believe, uh, what is uh, Takanashi, yeah, Takanashi Mei, who is. This sort of uh, very talented pian, pian uh, young kind of pianist, but she uh, is also sort of shy because she keep kept getting like teased at school and stuff like that. So they all have their sort of societal anxieties and hurdles in their backstories, and they eventually get together and try to form this anonymous um, artist circle, uh, Jelly, and they post their covers and albums and like mixes and illustrations and stuff like that on uh YouTube and hopefully you know they're trying to get a bunch of followers together. And then the rest of the again series is 
this mixed bag of like general i don't want to it's not episodic but it's like general almost stream of consciousness uh arc overall arc of the girls coming together and creating these various things and then overcoming their conflict sense of control anxieties and then going back upon their backstories and resolving the sort of problems that occur um due to uh problems that occur in the present due to their troubled uh pasts right so that's more or less the general structure of the story and again it's sort of centered around how each of them overcome their social anxiety and they want to create stuff for the world to see but they're just like oh but i had this trauma in the past or like i'm this this sort of person so can i really uh push stuff out into the world without getting laughed at and it's all that sort of stuff that we've seen before and um i want to say that in my opinion the way that they utilize they set the way that they set up their or the way that the writers set up each of the characters backstories except for maybe like the the former idol girl um the way that they, they set up the lore and the way that the characters interact with their environment due to their previous backstories is a little bit rough around the edges. It's a little bit of a standard like, oh, but I can't be confident because because I was scared in the past, bro. Like, and it's that sort of um, very green eggs and ham kind of uh, dialogue. At, at Formulaic. Yeah, 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 formulaic. Um, layer one, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's very not subtle. Um, however, once they get together and they start talking with each other and they're like, hey, what direction should the band, go? or not the band, but it's like, what direction should this like music channel go? Uh, what are we doing this for? Stuff like that. That sort of uh, team complex stuff is written well. But again, it's like the parts where they revert back to, yeah. But 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 like how do I face people in, in society because because I had problems in the past like that part is very cheesy and that part you know in, in the scenes where they're just like I feel like that what? was my initial apprehension to this series is because mm. the synopsis is like yeah this this former top idol and this former VTuber and this former and it's just like I feel like the the sort of backstories are a bit too it's conducive to them being like yeah they but kinda, okay they overlap being unique okay it's yeah it just thing. feels yeah. like it's very like i feel like just reading the synopsis of the character backgrounds is like okay i'm like going into this i know <laughs> that i'm just going to get this is this character's episode and they're going to overcome their sort of uh hang-ups or whatever okay and this is this character's unique. episode yeah. And they're going to overcome their hang-ups. And this is this character's episode. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like... I feel like... <laughs> Honestly, though... Well, like, I, even I feel like the problem, too, is... like, forgivable now, but... Yeah. I was going to say, since they're all, since they're all like, creatives as well, like, the, the hang-ups, I would imagine, have a... Or could potentially have a significant amount of overlap. Yeah. At least as far as, like, and, emotionally... And... You know. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do have a decent amount of overlap. They are pretty much they're structured pretty similarly, and um, except for I, I want to say probably the main character, and it is a little bit upsetting that a lot of it's kind of at the end of the day, it's kind of just like, oh, like what's wrong with me being unique or me doing things my way? It's like, I'll just, I will just do things my own way. Thank you very much. I don't need, you know, you guys to tell me that I need to do X, Y, Z, or, you know, I don't need this sort of, you know, corporate pressure or like mainstream pressure on me. I'll just do it because I like doing it and I'm unique or whatever. And that's that sort of general bent. And um, there are some parts of it where it does become unique, like later on, um, the illustrator kind of strikes out for herself and you know comes across some hurdles where people are asking her to do different stuff or like they're not impressed but but even that that kind of just ends up being like i want to draw because because of my friends or you know shit like that or like uh because i was inspired by 
because I was inspired by the music or, you know, something like that. And it's very, again, layer one, right? It's something that we've seen in a billion anime before. Oh, I, I only drew good at drawings because I was truly inspired by the music before or um, like I was afraid of being unique. But now I'm no longer being afraid of being unique. And I'll tell all of these idiots that I'm no longer afraid of being unique. And, uh, you know, um, obviously these sorts of ideas exist in real human life, right? Outside of anime. But the expression is very cheaty, is what I'm saying. It's like a, that's more of just like a very basic kind of musical format than it is a sort of a proper um, organic storytelling, is what I want to say. Um, again, once they get together, the teen conflict stuff is written quite well. Uh, and I think, in terms of the backstorytelling and the resolution, it does get significantly better. For from I want to say episode nine onward, which is kind of sad because that's like two thirds into the anime, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but it does get better in episode nine onwards due to the fact that the the girls start centralizing around the former idol Kano's story, um, which brings in a lot of you know other people into the cast, and it's a it's a little bit more of an alternative from. It's a little bit more of a of a more organic variant of like I just want to be unique or like why why is society pressuring me to do these stuff blah blah blah. Um, it's a little bit of a better variant of that, and I think when the girls are centralizing around that, it's a little bit better. Um, because it also kind of starts bringing the themes of like social media and all this other stuff, which is nice. Um, but I think before that, it's a little bit rough around the edges. There is a good, again, during like teen conflict stuff, when they're trying to help each other out, when they're trying to say, Hey, look, this is like, you know, you, you gotta, this is who you really are, stuff like that. There is a good balance between the characters in terms of that sort of push and pull dialogue, as well as screen time and how relevant they are to the current storyline. So, um, Obviously, Mahiru and Mahiru, the quiet illustrator girl, and Kano, the former idol girl, are do get a lot of screen time. But later on, um, the Watase Kiwi, so the VTuber girl, right, as well as the um, um, what is it, May, right, uh the piano pianist girl they also get quite a number of, of uh, amount of a decent amount of screen time because the story develops their backstories a little bit more as well or like the, how they want to get out their hole a little bit more as well and then they use those two characters to help really kind of go around and try to resolve Mahiru and Kano the main two girls character uh, problems right so they they have them like motorcycling around and like uh, helping or getting some, trying to get some advice from other people on how to help Mahidu and kind of sort of get out of their slump and you know help them out, and that provides them with screen time while still adding relevance or while still progressing the current storyline that is centered around the Kano, the former idol. But it brings in the support characters to have extent. So I do like that sort of uh, writing slash structuring quite a bit. Um. Again, there's a lot of like social media related themes and like how people on the internet act and stuff like that. And I do like like you know just like how Oshinoko and some other series did. And I do like those sorts of themes being represented in a lot of these series these days because, again, it is the it is the zeitgeist, right? It is our current sort of cultural um, attraction in terms of you know talking about these sorts of things is talking about how mean people can, how fucked up people can be due to this sort of global instantaneous social media, anonymous, yeah, global anonymous instantaneous social media, right? So I do think it's good for him to bring that sort of theme into into the uh, story here. And that was represented well. Um, and I also do think, so in a lot of these idol series, right, there's like this evil producer or this evil corporate head that's like, you know, 
you guys want to be creative music artists, but how about you just become, you know, slutty idols instead? Or, you know, how about, how about you guys just sell yourselves out or whatever? You know, there's that like evil corporate head kind of thing in the storyline. Yeah, this one is no different. Uh, there is another sort of this corporate villain slash producer that uh, is represented by the former idol's mother, Kano's mother, uh, Hayaka Yukine. But the good thing is, while well, obviously the initial setup is very on the nose, like she is out for herself and to make the money and to make the fame, right? That initial setup is good, uh, is very on the nose, excuse me. But the actions that the writers have her do in the series is a little bit more subtle than that. It's like, you know, she, you know, continues kind of speaking in these sort of sentences where it's like she's really pushing for the good of, you know, she's trying to milk the talent out of the people that have talent is sort of how it, I want to phrase where it's like, oh, you know, I can, I have trust in you to be a good singer. I have trust in you to be a good idol. I have trust in you to be a good illustrator. So, you know, grab my hand, let's go for it. And these sorts are other sentences that she's saying. And obviously those, um, that kind of creates this like standard story variant where um, Kano, the former idol, is sees her mother in this sort of like evil corporate headlight or corporate, yeah, corporate head kind of perspective. And then later on in the story, it'll probably be revealed like, you know, she, she, she was only acting that sort of cold because she really um, believed in the idols and just wanted to push them as hard as possible towards the spotlight or whatever that shit is, right? So there's that sort of standard story variant that it could fall into. But I do like the fact that right now, it's not just the mother being like an obvious evil corporate head, like, oh, ho, 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 like I'm gonna fucking wreck everybody. And it's like, my daughter, it's like, she's, she's fucking nothing to me you know it's not like that it's a lot like, of the it, words it's not like i yeah. mad cinderella girls where yeah, the, yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly producer exactly. is literally yeah. taking like steps that <laughs> yeah, ruin her own thinking. business yeah 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 exactly that's what i was thinking um and it is much better depicted and i do like that aspect of it i I'm not necessarily of the faction that every villain in a story absolutely needs this like great I'm great morality I'm I'm doing this for the greater good. I'm not of that faction to be honest. Um but it is good to not have an idol slash girls band series where the evil dude is the evil producer corporate head. You know what I mean? It is good to yeah, not I mean, have that. Yeah, it doesn't make. Yeah. It doesn't make. I I feel like, like I was saying with the it's Cinderella girls, like, it doesn't make those. much. Yeah. It, it also doesn't make much sense. Yeah. Like in this yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, it's like, sure, you can show it taking an emotional toll on the character and like the talent yeah. and like what they want to do, but what you can't do is you can't make them again as evil as like the Cinderella girls producer mm -hmm. lady because. It doesn't make any sense that they would be essentially sabotaging their own business. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. For you sure. can have them fire people in like other scenarios and things like that, and like cut people and stuff like that. But you can't make them be like, you know, just like the give Cinderella random girls thing. Like, hey, everybody. I'm just gonna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna like fuck up your entire setup because I hate you. Like okay, yeah, but they're your talent. Because town. I'm a pretty, yeah, I'm evil. <laughs> they like, are, it's like, yeah, okay. they are the thing that you're supposed to be making you make money. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So I do, I do like this more subtle representation, um, and I hope that that's sort of a decent model for more idol series or like music production, whatever series going forward. Um, but I did like that representation. I oh yeah, I, I forgot also um. Uh, just one more thing on the audiovisual end. Uh, most of the, again, it's it's Dokobo and they are you know you treating this as their fiftieth anniversary series, but um, 
their episode 11 is at least 50 percent better in terms of visual quality than all of their like previous episodes which like i don't know what happened there but you know i'm not i'm not complaining too much maybe you know i i kind of wish that maybe their visual quality in episode 11 was the case for all of their episodes but you know it is what it is i mean the previous episodes are also pretty good but episode 11 like when i saw the animations pop out and everything suddenly and just like all the smooth frames i was just like oh what like why did you just like what happened it was probably (laughs) a guest um yeah like guest guest animation director like how naruto does it you know yeah but yeah um overall i want to say it was a pretty decent uh girls in a band series um i don't necessarily think that it reaches the heights that something like a Kaon or a Bochi the Rog or whatever, or even, you know, I guess in this season, Girls Band Cry um, tries to reach um, or has reached. But it is a pretty decent series all around, especially due to um, I think it's a little bit hard. There's not much to fault with regards to the audiovisuals, although it's not like it's not youth at table, but it's still very quite solid. Um, and the story itself unfolds relatively nicely, although the beginning is a little bit rough around the edges in terms of how the backstories are set up. But again, once the interpersonal re- interactions, interpersonal relationships plus interactions happen a little bit better, more uh, between the four main members of the cast, the story definitely progresses a little bit better. So yeah, overall, pretty solid, at least minimum above average series. I would probably give this a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. Um, Damn, worse than, my, than worse than high speed at 12. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> Clearly worse than uh, the car series, but I think if you do like the girls and like a band kind of just doing the music stuff, this is that de- this is definitely an okay watch when you have the time. I'm not sure whether I will be like you have to watch this. This is a fucking classic. Uh, I would probably not say that. But it's definitely a solid addition if you like this sort of genre. So, but is it the uh, best Doga Kobo series? This see this hell year. no, Doga hell no. Um, well, yeah, Doga, name one better. Yuri Yuri is definitely a hundred. <laughs> I said no. I said this year. Nah, that shit. Dude. This year? Yeah. I forgot what they did this year. They the they did like Saint Cecilia, right? And then like Technoroid Overmind. I think those two. Or something like that? I don't even know. Wasn't this Wait, you're saying this is better than Technoroid Overmind? Excuse me? Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. What? <laughs> what? Wait, that this was this year? year? What the fuck? No. No, I don't think. Also I don't even know what it was this year. I don't even yeah, think this they've was, done uh, anything else this year. Yeah, th- this was their first work this year. Last year they did um, Technoroid Overmind, Oshinoko, and Saint Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence. So I think out of those three, Obviously, Oshinoko is, like, better. But, um, yeah. The other two were kind of, you know, they're kind of there in terms of overall, um, just, like, the package, I would say. But I would say in terms of Doko, the issue is, okay, here's the issue. It's hard to, like, Doko Kobo obviously did an amazing job, like, not even kidding, with, like, Oshinoko. But... It's a little bit hard to be like, <laughs> how do I say this? It, Dokoba is certainly one, I'm sorry, uh, Oshinoko is certainly one of Dokoba's best works. Not even a question. But that's also kind of like praising Index for, or like, it, it's kind of like, how do I say this? It's kind of like praising A1 Pictures for Sword Art Online. They did do Sword Art Online, right? Yeah, uh, Sword Art Online. Or JC Staff for doing Index. Like, at, at a certain point, 
you you know as long as they got enough money yeah it's like good job you picked the right show you picked the right show and then all the producers gave you all the investors gave you all the money like that's you know that's if you can't do that you're just fucked it's it's like the the studios that can't pull that out properly are the exception rather than the norm like again the infamous studio d and kind of fate stuff right um beyond that most studios should be able to perform when they're given all of the monies right <laughs> so i'm not too surprised that it works you'd think i would say yeah you think uh, i would say doyle cup was most emblematic I would say, uh, so if I had to rank like a combination of my favorite and like most emblem representative the Okobo series, it, number one would definitely be Yuri Yuri. And then number two would be some, it would be like a tie between New Game and Umaru. And then number three would be uh, What's the Ten, I think. Those four would be like the the Okobo what about series. Plastic <laughs> memories. What about Sword Boys? Sword Boys, yeah. What about, bro, what about... uh? This shit, guy oh. didn't even mention Gabriel Dropout or Dumbbells. Gabriel Dropout is very good. Um, I'm just You didn't saying, even he mention most... Oshinoko, excuse me? I literally... Literally, he <laughs> literally just talked about Oshinoko. He didn't say top four. The entire, the entire like, <laughs> topic up. of yeah, this fucking... He didn't say top four, I didn't hear... Or or Uchime, dude. Uchime. The entire lead up to me listing my top four Bro. was listing why I didn't pick Oshinoko. <laughs> like, what uh, else is there? Listen, yeah. man. If you can't get your point in in the time that it takes for me to watch TikTok, I'm not listening. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Dude, dude, dude. Okay. Man girl? Man girl was legit. What's wrong with you? Oh, God, dude, man girl was actual <laughs> unironic peak. Yeah, man girl. <laughs> when it first came out, that was the best. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Looking I, still, list, damn. I still bring up Mangirl's OP sometimes just to fucking laugh. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I remember that. I just cry right now. Anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. Um, You know. They did, they did a, sol- a solid job with this series as well, so you know. Uh, if you do like this sort of series, please do go check it out. Although, again, I will warn you for anybody in this season, currently we're trying to watch both both um, this series and Girls Band Cry, or future viewers kind of trying to do similar stuff with this and Pochi the Rock and Girls Band Cry and all this other stuff. There's too much of a good thing. <laughs> There's only so much teenage angst and, you know, I'm not very confident in myself. That you go through before you're just like, all right, I need to turn this shit off. I need to, I didn't just watch random TikToks of people like dancing or doing whatever. I, I can't handle this. <laughs> uh, I realized this very quickly when I turned this series on and then also like tried to cram in a girl's band cry afterwards. So, you know, um, so just be warned. <laughs>